I ain't gonna lie. When it comes to things in prison, the littlest situation can put you in harm's way. You owe somebody some money, they might want to flip you. You beat somebody when it comes to gambling, they might want to flip you. For this video here, I'm going to be letting y'all know about a time when an inmate got his stomach ripped open all over a card game. Ha <laughs> Dom the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent, got me bent. Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try testing. Step two, cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man, suitcase this. My cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted. What's up, y'all? You already know, man. K for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like subscribe button. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be getting a little, you know, a little dirty with it. We're going to be talking some real spill about a situation where an inmate got ripped open all over playing a game of spades. Now, shout out to everybody out there that likes playing spades. Shout out to everybody that's good at playing spades. Me, I'm kind of raw at it myself. But I will let y'all know. Some people do not like to lose. Y'all already know it can turn dangerous when it comes to gambling, when it comes to betting, anything like that when you are incarcerated, okay? Now, you know, they got all types of different activities and shit like that for you to do when you are incarcerated as far as like working out in the rec cage. You know, they got weights, stuff like that. Some camps allow free weights, some don't. You know, they got different types of competitions as far as basketball, football, soccer, even cornhole, even ping pong at certain places. You could be hitting ping pong balls on the table back and forth. You feel me? Well, this right here takes place that happened to do after a spades tournament went down. Now, I've been at several places where they run spades tournaments and, you know, at the end of it all, you know, you would, you would think people would like accept the loss, take the loss is what it is. But at the end of the day, you know, just some people got it in the back of their mind that they won't take lose for an answer. Okay, well, around this time I was at Charlotte CI. And um, like I said, it was that time of year where they were doing spades tournaments. You know, people come together. Everybody always wants to get the best spades partner. One that can look into how many books they got off rip and y'all want to try to run the table. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, this is the time of year where packages were coming, you know, people do a lot of robbing, you know, like if you get a package put in your name, a holiday pack, I might not be getting one, you feel me, and I want what you have, so of course I'm going to try to take what you have, I'm going to try to finesse you out of your shit, you feel me, first I'm going to come at you politely and try to play up under you before I got to make it lead to some type of physical violent act, alright, and then if that don't work, then of course, time to get them. You feel me? But anyway, so for this one here, it was the last finals of the Spades tournament. The last teams were going at it. Boom, boom. Next thing you know, one of them lost. One of them's a winner. Now, the one who was the winner, okay, he actually lived in G-Dorm, all right? I lived in D-Dorm, but they had like a... As far as when you when you when you do the spades tournaments, you know some camps don't even allow you to gamble or bet, but they'll put like tournaments out there to where they don't think anything seriously is on the line. You know they don't think it is anything other than just a game. You feel me? But in all reality, any type of thing that's going on, any type of thing that can have us, you know, be in confrontation to where you pick left, I pick right. To where we could try to make some type of money and come up off of each other, there's going to be gambling. So these individuals had some type of gambling going on on the side of, you know, the tournament alone. You feel me? Now, when the one person lost, you know, it wasn't even that big of a deal to me who won, who lost. You know, I'm not going to go out there and watch the spade tournament or nothing like that. You know, you just hear about it. That shit don't matter to me. I'm worried about, you know, making it out of here alive. So many people getting stabbed, wet up, and beat up over bullshit that I'm trying to make sure I make it home to my family. I ain't got time to lose focus to watch people play cards. You feel me? If I wanted to have some type of interest with the cards, I'd get on the table and play myself. You know what I'm saying? I'd get on there and I'd run spades, me and my partner, and we would do what we do. Well, a lot of people were so into it and shit like they are when the Olympics are played on, on the TV. You know what I'm saying? Now, when the dude lost or whatever, nobody's seen it coming. But the guy who actually was the loser was in my dorm. The guy who won was in G-Dorm. So the guy from G-Dorm comes on over to our dorm. And, um, 
you know, I'm thinking that, you know, they're cool, they're homies, you know, there ain't that type of conflict, you know, they're just, you know, probably just coming over here to chop it up and vibe even after the fact. Because a lot of times, you know, people do play against their homeboys or they'll get their homeboy on their team or their homeboy might already be on someone else's team or however it may be. So when that dude came in our dorm, Okay, from the looks of it, from the point of view, from me and a couple of my other homeboys, we were sitting there making a goulage at this time. When we, but, you know, we're going to observe and look anytime someone who isn't from our dorm comes in our dorm. So, you know, you're kind of on beat. So when we look over there and we see the dude come in the dorm, like I said, we're not really thinking nothing of it. We're laughing. We're bullshitting. We're eating goulage. We had Cuban crackers in our hand and, you know, different shit like that. We look on over. And, you know, he's dapping everybody up. He's walking around the dorm. He's saying what's up to everybody and shit like that. Now, when he goes up to the dude that he just beat in the spades tournament, from the look that I seen, it looked like that he was just embracing him. You know, like when you dap someone up and you pull them in and then you put your arm around them like that. You feel me? Like you basically like give them that little hug. Like what's happening? That's what it looked like from my point of view. So I didn't think nothing of it. You know, like I seen when they first like collided like that. And I just thought, oh, they was just, you know, embracing each other. Like that's my dog. You feel me? But in all reality, he brought the dude towards him and he gutted him. Okay. Now when I say gutted him, I mean he gutted him so good. Like it looked like he stuck that bitch in his belly button. But it probably made its own hole, you know, right above it or below it. Or, you know, it could have helped it get in a couple inches just by how deep his belly button was. But it, he embraced him, pulled him in, and stuck it in him and ripped up. When he did that, we heard all types of screaming and we heard like a, it was like a grunt noise. But the grunt noise that we heard was like a, like a screaming grunt. You feel me? Like I can't even describe it. You understand? But that noise alone caught everybody's attention. And when we looked over there... Sure enough, man, that dude was laying there. He had his blues on, which is his uniform, and his whole fucking stomach was just covered in blood. The whole front of the shirt was just drenching. You know what I'm saying? And when we see him, we're like, oh, shit. And then you look over there, and the dude who who wet him, you know, of course he got missing off rip. He wasn't, like, standing over him with a knife or nothing. He got missing on everything, but then when we look over, we see him inside the open bay bathroom washing his knife off. Like, he wasn't carrying himself, like, trying to hide that much. You know, like, most people would, like, huh, 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 and then fucking get missing and swoop, get rid of the blade and everything like that, hop in the shower and start bathing, you know, trying to hide all evidence possible. This dude was just literally standing over there in the open bay bathroom, washing all the blood off of his hands and off of the knife. You feel me? Everyone starts surrounding the person that's on the ground, shit like that. Next thing you know, guards come in and do a massive shakedown. When I say a massive shakedown, I mean that they found way more than just a knife, okay? They, they was in that bitch flipping all of our stuff for probably two and a half hours. They had us laying on our bunks with our hands behind our head, with our face in our pillow, all that shit. They didn't even want us to make eye contact with them. Had us sitting there like going through it, you know, all because this dude got wet like that. But what it is is, see, people get wet all the time in prison, okay? Don't, don't get me wrong. It happens all the time in all different states, you know? But it was the fact of how gory this one was. That blood that was on the floor and that was on that dude's shirt, that shit looked black, like dark purplish black. It wasn't just regular blood color, you know? That shit looked like it was an artery or something that was hit. You feel me? And the dude himself that was ripped open, after he made the grunt noise and fell on the ground, he collapsed. He didn't make no more noise. He was like just laying there, just dead ass, like unconscious, like out of it. You feel me? And all this shit took place over spades, all over a card game. You feel me? To me, this was one of the goriest situations that I've seen with my own eyes. As far as as much blood as I witnessed there, you know. But as far as like watching a real deal situation going down, like dudes knife fighting and hitting each other up. This one here, as far as seeing the scenery of the blood, is up there. But I've seen ones where dudes were literally knife fighting each other and there was blood like everywhere. Like, you'd be like, this shit looks ridiculous. Look like when you fuck around and you put raviolis inside of the microwave or something and don't put a napkin over that. But you know, when you open that and that bitch is just splattered all in there, that's what it looked like. You feel me? 
on the other scene but this one here was so much blood that it just it looked like a different color paint you feel me like it just it was so much to where you're like how is this much blood coming out of this person you feel me and like i said it wasn't a regular standard red like you see a red bandana color or you know red when you get a little cut it was such a deeper cut and the dude wasn't even moving you feel me to where you're like oh yeah that dude's out of there you know that's that's the first thing i thought you feel me and when they came in there, they did all the shakedown and they flipped everything like that. They didn't catch the dude who, you know, did the wet up. You know, the dude who hit him, he didn't even get in trouble. You know, they found so much shit on so many different other people, you know, that the, at the end of the day, the person who actually wet him, you know, he didn't even get caught for it. You feel me? To me, that boy overkilled the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, you lost, you know, straight up. You feel me? You know what you was getting involved with. And at the end of the day, it is what it is, you know. Yes, better man up, you know, pay up when you owe. And if you win, collect. If you don't, you lose, then, you know, charge that shit to the game. You feel me? Now, the dude tried to, like, flip it around and say that the dude was cheating. He was looking at his cards and all this different stuff like that. But, you know, when someone's losing, you know, they're going to think of anything they can to feel like to back out of paying. You feel me? So I feel like... The way that they had that shit going, it was like, in his mind, he already knew he wasn't going to pay this dude if he lost. Or, he already had in his mind to where there is no losing. He never once planned out, what is he going to do if he loses? You know, and the crazy thing is, the dude that came over there, he didn't come over there to collect the money or nothing like that. That was bet behind the scenes from the spades tournament. He already collected that. They were already paid out and everything. You feel me? So, it isn't like he got it directly from him. When you have big things going on like this, like if there's a big pot and a big deal, a big thing going on between two people that are betting and gambling or whatever, neither party is holding the money. You feel me? That shit's always given to someone else. There's always a pot holder. There's always someone else that holds it. So that way if you lose, you know, you can't renege and, and try to take it back out. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing you can do. You already put the money up. So the dude was already paid and everything like that. He just felt comfortable enough to come on over to our quad to say, what's up and come over here and maybe vibe with this dude or just kick it with him or whatever it was but the other dude wasn't willing to let that shit go you see what i'm saying and you see these type of situations go on there ain't nothing you can really do about it but learn what not to do what not to get involved with you feel me that's why they always say to stay away from gays gambling gangs and the guards them are the main four G's that you're supposed to stay away from because there's always some fuckery going on to where something happens to where you're putting yourself in harm's way. Next thing you know, you're going to get your shit ripped open. You feel me? You're going to be cut cut up the middle and there ain't nothing you can do about it. it look like something you see on an operation table. Like something you see after someone gets out of the hospital and they take their shirt off and that shit just stitched all the way up their shit. You feel me? These are the type of things that can happen over something so simple. Now... The pot for the, that whatever they had betting on the side, I doubt it was 500 or better. No, it was probably maybe 100 and under worth, you know, if that, if it was even that much. It could have been just a $50 PayPal, you know, it could have been something that simple, you know what I'm saying? But people are going to tend to take it there a lot of times when it ain't even got to go there, you know what I'm saying? That dude got his shit ripped open. To this day, we don't know if we made it or not. You know, I can't tell you if he died. I can't tell you if he lived. But I can tell you that the guards were telling us he didn't make it. You know, but they've told us that about so many people that I've ran into later on. I'm like, man, them boys was talking about you flatlining and everything. He's like, hell nah, bro. They just beat me real bad and then shit me, bro. I'm like, nah. You see, so you find out that guards be lying. So you can't really know if that person's donezo or not. You know, you can't find out if that dude was... You know, if he fucking checked in or he, he checked out early and went to see the Lord or if his ass is just banged up real bad. But i tell you this, from what i seen and the way it looked of him on the ground laying there, not even moving shit, just open, oozing out like that. I say nine times out of ten, that boy is no longer here. I'm just being real with you from, the, from, from what i seen. You know, when you see something that looks so bad, so, so much damage to where you're like, man, I know for a fact that. Doctors can't work on them. You know what I'm saying? That's how it looked. And it was mind-blowing because, 
like I said, I thought that he was embracing them. You know, I didn't think he was cutting them. You know, that's the last thing that I expected. You feel me? Like I wasn't expecting, at least from him, because from the most part, I thought that was like kind of cool. I've seen them before. You know, this ain't the first competition they've had with each other, you know. They've actually ran spades together on teams before and shit. You know, they was like cool with each other, you know. So, it could have been from something deeper than the spades, you know. But it wasn't really a coincidence that it happened right after the spades, you know what I'm saying. So, like, when you catch someone, you know, turning on someone like that over something so simple, it makes you kind of hard to trust people. And then if it was over something other than the spades, he wanted to start, you know, lightly telling different people that, oh, the dude was cheating. He, he was looking at his cards and different shit like that. So clearly to him, it was over the spades. Now, don't get me wrong. This going to be in my opinion, and I want y'all to put y'all's opinion in, in, in the comments. Would you wet someone up over, over cheating? I mean, shit, if the stakes are high enough, boy, I will. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't that high of a pot and it ain't that big of a deal, I'm definitely going to dress you and I'm going to call you out on that shit. And we're going to bump for you trying to play me like that. Because I feel like you try to play up under me and you try to get over on me some type of way. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to call that shit out, though. And I'm going to let you know. It, I just caught your soft ass cheating. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it known. You feel me? But if the stakes was high enough and that, and that money was on the line and it was real deal, you know, and I know that I was keeping it loyal on my end and I wasn't trying to cheat. You know, I was keeping that shit rock solid all the way. And you try to play me and that money's high enough, I'll wet you up over that shit. You feel me? I'm just being real though. That's, that's me. I want to know what y'all would do. Even if that individual was cheating, would you wet him up over it? Or would you just beat him up? Or would you make him give you back what you paid? Or what would you do? You feel me? Like, would you be like, you know what? I don't even want to collect, bro. Did, you getting this knife instead. Is that what would come to your mind? Because sometimes that's what comes to people's minds. And in prison, the way everything's broken down and the way everybody does their time is even if that man ain't cheating, if people don't want to pay, people don't want to lose, or people can't cope with losing, that they'll off ripping their mind for like, there's no way I can lose. There's no way I lost. He's got to be cheating. And then they'll jump the gun and they'll wet that person, even if that person won fair and square. You see, that's what makes it so dangerous when you play games and you put something on the line inside of prison. You feel me? Because you can literally be playing as a straight arrow and you could 100% no cheating, no nothing win and a person will still want to turn around and put that knife on you because they feel like you cheated because in their mind there's no way they could have lost. You see, there's a lot of sore losers that it don't come out, you don't see it, until it's time to where it's too late to where they're all they know is to to act to to bring harm your way when really they're just a sore loser and they couldn't take the fact that they lost fair and square you feel me me personally i don't think the dude cheated because these are the type of events and spade tournaments and stuff like that to where it ain't like it's just four people just sitting there man they got a whole crowd around them and they're like in the middle right there you feel me? People are literally like able to see if you're cheating or not. You know what I'm saying? They're able, you can't just lean over and see dudes' cards and you can't like have someone standing behind them that's signing you the numbers or, or anything like that. You can't really, no, there's no way to really cheat in front of all these people. You know what I'm saying? Like you and your partner could probably, you know, communicate under the table some type of way, you know, certain taps and certain different things. You got to just pay attention to your partner and follow his suit. You got to see what your partner don't have. And you learn that while you're playing. And you got to see what he's running, what he isn't running, what he don't have. You got to learn these things. You feel me? And once you do, then, you know, you, 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 you start, you start getting better and better. But to me, I don't think he cheated. You know what I'm saying? I think this person was just a sore loser because I've seen him in the dorm. You got to look at it. He lived in the same dorm as me. So I've seen him get mad over just petty games, you know, like spades or he could be playing tonk with someone or palace or casino. And he was always the loud mouth. He'd get mad. And he'd take that shit so serious to where he felt like in his mind he could never lose. If someone was beating him, then they was cheating. But really, I feel like Sometimes, you know, you come across someone that's better than you. It don't matter if you put 100 hours a week into playing spades, you know. You could also lose to someone that didn't put that many hours in, you know. It might just be their day. They might just be that souped up and that good from playing a long time ago. You feel me? But 
When you got to go and grab a knife and wet someone up because they did that shit because they won fair and square. In my eyes, I'm like, damn, that shit ain't really respected. You feel me? But I knew to pay more attention to that dude. You know, I knew to keep an eye on him because I knew what he was capable of. You know, a lot of times he'd be raw, raw and always arguing. And every time he'd get in conflict with someone, it was over some type of game he was playing. Every time. Every time you hear him arguing, it was either over chess, checkers, cards, you know what I'm saying? Something. So he was that type of person to where if he landed at the wrong institution and he ran into somebody that was on their time just like he is, he'd find himself getting in the way more shit than he would if he would just not gamble, not, you know, try to play people out of their money and stuff like that. Because there's going to always be someone out there better than you. You feel me? And here he wet this dude, ripped this dude shit wide open. Something like you see out of a movie, I swear. Something you'd see like in a, on an operation table on, on the show Grey's Anatomy, y'all. You're like literally, bro, like he was so ripped open, bro, that it looked like unreal. You feel me? And then in my mind, I'm like, bro, this shit was all over a game of spades. You know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people watching this, you know, probably play spades. I know a lot of people watching this that done did time, probably been on that spades table. And you know, at the end of the day, you don't think it's nothing. It's all fun and games and cool and shit. Me and my neighborhood, we grew up playing spades. We grew up playing them on the weekends, chilling while hoes, drinking and shit. You feel me? You lose, it'd be, it'd be a, a, a male and a female against a male and a female. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like how you do truth or dare. Instead, we play spades, a drinking game and stuff like that. Growing up with female, that's how we did it when we were younger. So when I went to the county, I already knew how to play spades. You know what I'm saying? That and dominoes. We call them bones. So that and bones. I already knew how to play both of them very well by the time I got locked up. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, when you find yourself in there and you're like, oh, shit, I already know how to play. Yeah, let's run it. And you get on there and you become real good and all that shit. You don't know that you could be putting yourself in harm's way because you got someone out there, bro, that isn't going to want to pay up if they lose fair and square. Straight up. So just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before you get your ass ripped open from your belly button to your chin. Because I'm telling y'all, I seen it with my own eyes. Okay? It isn't like I'm telling y'all some shit that I heard of or, or could happen. I'm telling y'all something that I seen happen with my own two eyes. You feel me? All over a fucking game of cards. Straight up. But anyways, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all let me know any type of situations or anybody you seen get beat up or anybody you seen get hit with locks or jumped or wet up or anything over spades or over any type of card game y'all drop it in the comment section y'all already know i'm gonna keep on giving y'all that real spill you know how we do it over here on k for all tv but anyways i appreciate y'all rocking and tuning in like always y'all make sure y'all hit that like button on the way out if you ain't hit it on the way in stay tuned for the very next one and y'all already know like i always say make sure you keep them rats squares clowns chomos pedos gunners want to be island boys people with fake golds who are blind that got nothing but blind people following them out your circle until next time this the one and only frog